A gorgeous day here in central Illinois, but spring will have to wait. The 1A state championship to be decided here in Peoria this afternoon. Hello and welcome to Carver Arena in downtown Peoria, home of America's original March Madness. The pollsters did a wonderful job when it comes to these two teams. Two of the top three teams in the final 1A poll playing for the state championship here today. It's Macon Meridian and Woodlawn here for the call. Kurt Pegler and Cal Hubbard. Thank you, Lee. Again, welcome inside Carver Arena. It is championship Saturday. Class 1A boys basketball. Small school boys basketball with a pair of 30-win teams playing for the state championship. It does not get much better than this. Both teams are very deserving. Both teams had uh, great semifinal games yesterday, and today should be really interesting for, uh, for everyone involved. Let's show you how both of these teams made their way here to the state championship game. We'll start with the Hawks of Macon Meridian. 30 wins and two losses. Beat Gibson City, Melvin Sibley, and Catlin to win the sectional final. Then took out Colfax Ridgeview in the super sectional at Illinois State University on Tuesday before a win against Anawan yesterday, 51-47 in the state semifinal. The road to the final four for the Woodlawn Cardinals included victories over Altamont and Red Hill for the Bridgeport sectional. Then they beat Oakville for the Carbondale Super Sectional Championship on Tuesday before a 56-44 win here yesterday over Lewistown in the Class 1A state semifinals. Terrific players on both sides of the coin. We talked a lot about Dakota Getz yesterday with Macon Meridian, but his supporting cast starts with Jacob Shastine. He'll be one of the key players here. Jacob Shastine had a very good defensive effort yesterday on Copions, and uh, he also needs to get his outside game going to take pressure off the inside game. The Verhines brothers were terrific. Dawson and Bronson yesterday for the Woodlawn Cardinals, but they've got a pretty good uh, guy, too, in Casey Hammond, who gives them a nice lift, right? Casey Hammond did a nice job of bringing energy to the floor, attacking the basket on offense, and making things happen on defense. So I think he's going to be a key player today as well. We'll keep our eyes on both those guys. Let's talk about the keys to the game. First of all, what about making ready? And if the Hawks are going to be successful, Coach, what has to happen? Well, in order for the Hawks to be successful, uh, Getz needs to get to, to score on the on the interior. They also need to be able to handle the basketball without making mistakes. And they need to regain the swagger they had in the first quarter yesterday instead of the last three quarters where they didn't quite have that swagger. What about this, the, uh, what are the keys to success for Woodlawn? Uh, Woodlawn needs to use their de depth to their advantage since it's uh, a second game so quickly. Uh, the Verhines are going to be keys to victory as well and how they play. And they're going to have to play with poise down the stretch and uh, for, for the entire day. We're ready for basketball. Let's meet the teams. We'll go to our public address announcer, Paul Herzog. Good afternoon, basketball fans. On behalf of the Illinois High School Association, the city of Peoria, Welcome to Carver Arena for America's original March Madness. This 1A championship game for 2009 boys features the Macon Meridian Hawks, a record of 30 and 2, and the Woodlawn Cardinals, a record of 30 and 1. To honor America, please stand, remove your caps, and pause for a moment of silence as we remember the men and women of the armed forces serving us here and around the world away from their families protecting our freedom. Thank you, as we thank them. Now please address the flag with your hand over your heart. Our soloist, Robert Sonnenfeld, a senior at Valmeyer High School, leads us in the singing of our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light, what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. 
And now, let's meet the starting lineups for this 1A championship game. At a guard from Macon Meridian, a 5'9 junior, number 10, Corey Burns. At a guard from Woodlawn, a 6-foot sophomore, number 24, Dawson Verhines. At the guard for the Hawks, a 6-foot junior, 25, Trent Swiger. The other guard for the Cardinals, a 5'10 junior, 31, Casey Hammer. At forward for Macon Meridian, a 6'4 senior, 15, Dakota Getz. At center for Woodlawn, a 6'0 senior, 40, Kyle Bolt. Another forward for the Hawks, a 6'3 senior. 21, Jacob Shasti. Forward for the Cardinals, a 6'3 senior, 21, Jace Green. The third forward for Macon Meridian, a 6'4 junior, 42, Kyle Four. And the other forward for Woodlawn, a 6'5 senior, 22, Bronson Verhines. Sixteen-year head coach, six at Macon, a record of 139 and 38. Head coach for the Hawks, Jack Blickensdefer. Head coach for 13 years at Woodlawn, a record of 255 and 116, Shane Witzel. As the players and coaches wish each other good luck at half court, the IHSA Board of Directors of Member Schools and expect and promote good sportsmanship from its athletes, coaches, Students, parents, and spectators, we request your cooperation by supporting the participants and the officials in a positive manner. Do what's right. Thank you. No other state in America can claim the rich history and tradition that's been generated by March Madness in Illinois. It's America's original March Madness. Please direct your attention to the arena floor and meet the officials for this game. The referee from Pena, Steve DeClerc. From Olney, George Martin. And from Nashville, John Salee. Presenting the game ball will be Doug Snyder, President and CEO, and Brian Hancock, freshman in Equal Valley High School. Remember the Wildcats Varsity One Special Olympics basketball team, one of the sponsors of March Madness. Special Olympics, we appreciate their support and their contribution to the greatest high school single event in the land. Their proud sponsorship of the IHSA Do What's Right Good Sportsmanship campaign. We saw them sponsor that pregame handshake. And the Meyer starting lineups brought to you by Meyer. Check us out at Shop for More at Meyer.com. Burns, Swigert, Getz, Shastine, and Four for Macon Meridian. Hammonds, Verhines. There's two Verhines there, not Aparicio. Green and Bolt for Woodlawn. The same starting lineups which open the state semifinals for both these teams will open up the championship game. Macon Meridian in their green road jerseys with. White trim and Woodlawn with the opening tap and the white jerseys with the red trim. And the ball is out of bounds and it's going to go to Macon Meridian. Attacking off the dribble right away by Verhines. We are just underway. Class 1A Boys Basketball State Championship game. Neither of these teams has ever won a state title before. So there's going to be a little school history going on here today. Here's Swigert. Had the great start yesterday. Now from the outside, it's Cody Burns. His first shot is missed. Kyle, four offensive rebounds, sticks it up and missed it. It's offensive rebound from over Dakota Getz. A whistle before the, the play. It's going to be a foul on Getz over the back. That's a big call early in the game to establish themselves inside. The Bolt had good position. The Woodlawn Cardinals ranked number three in the state in the final AP poll, 30-1. and one. The Macon Meridian Hawks ranked number two. They're 30 and 2 entering this state championship game. A couple of powerhouse seasons for these teams. Meeting head to head here in the state finals at Carver Arena. And we are glad you're alongside on the IHSA television network. Verhines with the jumper is good. Bronson Verhines gives his team a 2 0 lead. Both teams have similar styles of attacking the rim. Man to man defense is a strength for both teams. 
You'll hear us talk about Bronson Verhines. You'll hear us talk about Dawson Verhines, his younger brother, who's the sophomore point guard. Bronson started the season last year as the starting point and then moved over halfway through the season when his brother replaced him. Burns offensive rebound. He stuck it back in. How about five foot nine, 150 pound junior Cody Burns getting the offensive rebound? And they, they were really hurt when he got in foul trouble yesterday. So I think it's a key to this first half to keep kids out of foul trouble. Bolt slips the pass. Nicely done. Jace Green catch and shoot from the baseline on the left. Nice job of distributing out of the post by Bolt. Green was really big in their victory yesterday. And now a steal. Verhines comes away with it. Foot race back. And he may have walked. He did. Um, you see a much more relaxed Woodlawn team playing today than you did yesterday. They're, uh, they're very aggressive on both ends of the floor. Uh, they're shooting passing lanes. Uh, they're just, they're just, they've got their personality back, the team personality. First ever state appearance for Shane Witzel's Cardinals. 210 students down near Mount Vernon. Turnaround jump shot missed. Ripped down by the Cardinals' Casey Hammond. Interesting thing where Shastine posted up and uh, Getz was able to enter the ball to him. Verhines drew contact. It's going to be a three-point opportunity now for Dawson Verhines. Real nice finish by Verhines. You'll see him attacking from the wing, avoids the charge, and still gets the basket up. And Dawson Verhines, as we complete our thought about his older brother Bronson. About halfway through last season as a freshman, Dawson took over the point guard's spot. That allowed Bronson to move off to the number two position. Versatile player. It gave him more angles to attack the basket, and the Verhines brothers have been a potent one-two tandem now for the Cardinals, who have a 7-2 advantage in the first two minutes and a half in this state championship game. Here's Getz, the Iowa football recruit. His short jumper is no good, but he's fouled. Nice job of isolating Getz in the post that time. They posted up Shastain in the last possession. This time they posted up Getz. You look at Dakota Getz, six foot four, 215 pound specimen. Has spent obviously some time in the weight room. Was the uh, star quarterback on his high school team here for the Hawks. He had 41 touchdowns combined rushing and passing. Signed a letter of intent to play college football at Iowa where he will likely play tight end. So You might have thought he spent a lot of time in the yeah. weight room, but it's going to get a lot different next year. He's going to be living in there. He's likely playing in his final basketball game competitively. As soon as the season's over, he'll be concentrating full time on, on football. Here's Bolt. The ball's coming right at us. Nicely done there. Calbot almost knocked us off the air, but we're still on the air. That's all right. Well, I like those post players that hustle and go to the floor. Woodlawn with a 7-3 advantage. Making Meridian, of course, co coached by Jack Blickensdurfer. He is also the principal of the school. That's an interesting combination, huh? Be a head coach and a principal? Yeah. Get to call the shots. Get to call the shots whether you're fired or not, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Chastine now. Lost the dribble. Good defense by the Cardinals. Now he gets it again on the baseline. Around one defender. Hangs, fires, missed the shot. It was contested. Kyle Four in the right place to come up with it. And off the glass and in. And what, Kyle Four now with a three-point opportunity. What a great job by Corey Burns of keeping that ball alive. You'll see it down on the baseline. Here, he's just a gutty kid that gets in the right place. And then a really good finish by Four. And you mentioned yesterday, Coach, how Cody played with four fouls against Anawan in that state semifinal and really affected his ability to be effective and now we're, we're seeing him play with so much confidence here this this afternoon in the state championship game well you, just, you also saw how uh, uh, with, with him out of the game the ball it just wasn't as smooth on the offensive end we're just underway woodlawn with a 7-5 lead back with more from the state championship game after these messages from our network sponsors good start for both these teams woodlawn with a 7-5 lead over making ready in the class 1A Boys Basketball State Championship game. Kurt Pegler along with former Normal University High Head Coach Cal Hubbard. Our sideline reporter is Lee Hall, our IHSA Television Network crew. If you just joined us, the third place game is complete. Lewistown, 15-point winner over Anawan in the third place game. And this is the Class 1A Boys Basketball State Championship game. A couple of heavyweights. Woodlawn at 30-1, and one, ranked number three in the state. Macon Meridian 30-2, and two, ranked number two. And similar offensive and defensive styles. So it's going to be a, a, a battle of who can execute the best and make the best decisions, which it most times is in a basketball game. 
Jay Screen. Now this is Josh Wiggs who's checked in for the first time this sophomore. He's 6'7", causes a lot of matchup problems because of his length, and he hits his first shot of the game. I marked uh, Wiggs as one of our key players and see how he's able to come in and uh, change the offensive flow for Woodlawn. Here's Burns and Shastine. Now they'll work it near side to Swigert. Here's Dakota Getz around a double team baseline jumper's good. That is one tough shot. Over an outstretched hand from the baseline. Good body control. His junior and his senior seasons, he averaged a double-double. He comes into the state tournament averaging better than 18 points and 13 rebounds per game. One of the gets. most amazing stacks, sta individual stats you'll ever hear. The Meridian seems very content to stay in their man defense here. I don't think they come out of it very often. Here's Jay Screen, lost the ball. Burns comes away with a steal. And flipped it ahead to Swiger, beats everybody down the floor, works on Hammond. Hammond contested the shot. His hand also came through the net. <laughs> and now we've got a foul. I think Coach thought there should have been a little basket interference. Foul is on Swigert. And that's the second foul now against Swigert, who was so good. Trent Swigert was so good yesterday in that semifinal victory. 18 points, six assists, and just three turnovers, and never came off the floor. Played 32 minutes. A solid effort in getting the Hawks into this championship game. Wiggs again, tough shot. Underneath the basket, flipped it up and in. Good job by penetrating right. Ryan. And Swigert turns the ball over in the backcourt. Getting a little ahead of themselves. Everybody's really anxious to play. Moving just a little bit too quick. Yeah. As Coach Wooden says, you want to be quick, but you don't want to hurry. 14-game winning streak is what Woodlawn carries into this championship game. Their lone loss, an overtime defeat in February. Assessor Valier. Wiggs Another. again. What a nice stroke he's got for a big kid to step out on the floor and have that kind of stroke off the bench. He's quite a, quite a good player. Six big bench points for Josh Wiggs. Dakota gets answers from the baseline, this time from the right side. 13-9, a four-point wooden lawn advantage. Two and a half minutes to go here. Opening quarter of the Class 1A Boys Basketball State Championship game here at Carver Arena between a couple of newbies to state. Woodlawn first ever appearance. Meridian's only other appearance in the state series was a super sectional appearance in 2001. Tough pass in traffic. Wiggs had the ball momentarily knocked around. Kyle Bolt's going to have to go way out to the timeline to track that one down. And now a travel violation against the Cardinals. Luke Simmons. What a strong defensive possession by Meridian that time. They just did a nice job shutting off the dribble. Get a good look at Jack Blickensturfer. His team had a 94-point effort in a December 8th victory over Sagamon Valley. A loss to Peoria Christian held to 49 points on December the 30th. That was in the uh, championship game of the State Farm Holiday Classic in the Twin Cities in Bloomington Normal. 2A team, Peoria Christian spent some of the year ranked number one, so that was uh, what Meridian considered a very good loss. There's a good catch and go, and again it's Dakota Getz. A little give and go. Yeah. With a pick from the, from the top. That was very well executed. The defensive pressure for Meridian is very strong today. Very strong. Hawks have closed them to within two now at 13-11. As we approach the minute and a half mark left in this first quarter and a steal by Jacob Chastine all the way down or even. A little bit of an air dribble. Or so we're tied at 13. Here's Wiggs spinning and scoring and a three-point opportunity and, and what a lift. second foul on uh, Getz as well. Wiggs has really stepped up here off the bench. See, Wiggs got in a very good position with Getz guarding behind him. Oh, the foul wasn't on Getz. On the help. Well, Wiggs has been big for this team in a reserve role. He led his team in scoring with 17 points in their sectional semifinal victory over Altamont and has been huge here in the state championship game with eight first quarter points off the bench. I'll give it a go. How about oh Burns? My. A little floater. Oh, my. Cody Burns. <laughs> little teardrop I don't know action. A, I don't know if it's a high percentage shot, but the kid it just plays so hard. He, one, he makes so much difference energy-wise with his team. That one brought some precipitation down with it. I think it was. 
or even at 15. Final minute of the opening quarter. Wiggs off the glass, missed it, tried to go and get it, the offensive rebound. It's fought out of there. Jacob Chastain comes away with it. And now the Hawks have a chance to attack. Gets over Holt, can't get the shot to go. Shot that one right over Kyle Bolt. Now we've got a foul in the backcourt against the Hawks. Get a look there at Shane Witzel in his 13th season. Overall, he is a class of 1988 Woodlawn grad. He played on the first two regional champions in school history. That was back in 1987 and 1988, and then coached the other two regional champions, last year's team and this year's team. He was a baseball player. That was his number one sport. He played at Murray State collegiately, signed a minor league contract with the Cincinnati Reds. But now he says that this has uh, become his his biggest thrill, taking his alma mater to the state championship game. Burns just picked up a second foul, uh, which could be a cause for concern. It was yesterday. Final 10 seconds, first quarter. Verheins around a double what team. A it's going off the glass. What a good offensive move by Verheins. Dawson Verheins, his team a two-point lead, and now the final shot at the horn. Swigert is off, and we're done with eight minutes of play. Good Woodlawn point. leads Meridian. 17-15, Class A Boys Basketball State Championship game will return to Carver Arena after this local timeout. Back at Carver Arena, it's Woodlawn with a two-point lead. This is my buddy Josh Gaither from Woodlawn. He's going to take us on a roller coaster ride. You guys ready? You the man, Josh. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Seated in the roller. Buckle your seat belts. Lower your lap bar. Let's go to the top, baby. It took, 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 took. Oh! 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 This is the part where I always get sick. They got everybody in on that. The moms, the dads, the grandmas and grandpas, they are fired up. They got a great sign in Woodlawn this week. We'll tell you about it a little later, guys. All right, Lee, go get your tums now that you've had the roller coaster ride. 17-15 in favor of Woodlawn as we start this second quarter of action. Two-point lead, making Meridian with the basketball. Making Meridian shot 80% in the first quarter, uh, and uh, but still had five turnovers. So that's got to be a point of concern. Swigert Much finds good. Dakota Getz. Good pre uh, basket penetration, finding Getz. And you are right, Woodlawn, which brings the ball up the floor, 8 of 10 from the field in the opening quarter. Hard to get much better than that. Here's Verhines. He stopped right in his tracks that time by Kyle Four, cleared by Getz. Now quickly back up the floor at Swigert in attack mode. Leaves for Chastain. The Hawks shoot for the lead here. Chastain now. Here's Getz and Burns. Swiger thought about the three, stepped inside the arch. Shot, couldn't get it, tipped around, still free. Getz had it in his hands, out of his hands. Now the Cardinals come down the floor. Contact, offensive foul, Jesse Hart going to be whistled for it. You got to love Swiger. He takes a bad shot, he comes back down and he takes the charge. He's to take get a, back in coach's good graces. Take a look at our first quarter stats brought to you by Menard. Save big money at Menard's. Woodlawn was 8 of 10 from the floor for 80%. Macon still shot around 50%. Uh, but uh, the uh, rebounds were pretty even. But the turnovers were 5 to 2. And now we're tied at 17. 90 seconds into this second quarter. State championship game here. 2009 state championship game. We got a foul. Looks like Dakota Getz is going to get to the free throw line. They've gone through about three different ways of getting Getz the ball inside. I think their offensive scheme is very strong against this man-to-man -man, man -man defense. They're trying to get the ball to Getz in the low post. Another ho-hum day at the office for Dakota Getz yesterday. A 15.10 rebound effort in the semifinal quiet. game against Anawan. And yeah, really quiet. if there's such a thing as a quiet double-double, he had it yesterday. <laughs> Oh, yeah. 
split his foul shots. He's already in double figures in scoring here. He's got 10 of his team's 18 and a one-point lead for the Hawks. Four out of five from the floor for Dakota Getz to open this basketball game. Here's Verhines working on Getz and Shastine. We've got a foul. No, a travel. They're still high school kids. Sometimes you just get in a little bit too big a hurry. I've been impressed, though, that even though this is a state championship game, we've seen no jitters. Both teams have come out and played really well here. And the intensity on their faces is significant. And now a steal. Verhines stepped in the passing lane, and he's bumped from behind by Burns, and the foul's going to go against Cody Burns. Verhines has done a good job of trying to deny Getz in the post. He's got long arms. He's been able to knock the ball away a couple of times. Corey Burns picks up his second foul now. That's uh, its third foul, I believe. They've got him for two at this okay. point. All right. I thought he had two earlier. And now a steal. They'll bring the ball back up the floor. Shastine thought about it. Good defense that time as the Cardinals covered up. Shastine again. Hangs, fires, rolls it off. For Hines back on the defensive backboard to clear for the Cardinals. Just like the way that these guys play. Corey Burns at the top there for Meridian. He plays so hard. These, both these teams really going at it hard here. A lot on the line. I think both teams feel comfortable attacking the other teams defensively. You can see both teams are pretty well scouted, too, because they know when the cuts are coming. They know what the other team's trying to do. So there have been some tapes, tapes exchanged anyway. Tough shot. Bronson Verhines. He was cut off as he tried to penetrate. Hit the pull-up. And now Woodlawn's got a one-point lead. Here's Swigert all the way down. Fills it up with the right hand, can't get it. Gets rebounds, he can't get it, but he's gonna go back to the free throw line. So uh, Gets is such a quick jumper that he goes up and he jumps straight up. we we'll see Swigert taking the ball down the basket at a very high pace, fast pace anyway, and Gets coming in behind him and cleaning up. Getting to the ball. We're gonna see Casey Dodson checking the game for making Meridian. And we'll also see Josh Wiggs re-enter the game for the Cardinals. What a big first quarter he had. Kyle Four leaves for Macon Meridian. Jace Green leaves for the Cardinals of Woodlawn. Whenever you're making a substitution, you want your substitutes to be able to hold things at status quo. Not they don't have to do anything great. Just hold them at status quo and give them some breaks. Dakota Getz gives his team a one-point lead. Back with more from the state championship game at the Carver Arena after these local messages. Well, I, I think the thing I always tell people is we made Jack Sigma who he was. He only had 36 points and 24 rebounds the game they played. And then Jay Scheidler was a sophomore in that Lawrenceville team. They beat us in double overtime. And we had two great Saragorda teams. And uh, actually, those kids come and spoke to my team, this year's team, before a super sectional win against Ridgeview. So the gap's been a long time. And all that says is I'm getting old, getting gray. And uh, I'm fortunate enough to have pretty good kids that put up with an old cranky old coach. So uh, that, that, that's, that's how we got here, them putting up with me, not them putting up, we putting up with them. Well, what a character Jack Blickensdurfer is. He's wearing his tennis shoes. He forgot his shoes or he left his shoes in his car when his team won the sectional championship against South, uh, Salt Fork. That was career win number 350 for him, his first career win with sneakers on. The kids enjoyed it so much, he said, you know what? We get to the championship game, I'll wear those sneakers again. He said it's the closest thing that he'll ever have to a tattoo is wearing those kind of crazy tennis shoes. So that's why he's got the suit and the uh, tennis shoes. Back down the floor comes his team, and Corey Burns is going to get to the free throw line. Good break. Executed down the sideline. Swigert made a nice pass across the lane for a shot opportunity. There you get a good look at those kind of wild Nobody will call sneakers. them good looking, will yeah. they? Closest I, thing he'll ever get to a tattoo is what he said. Is those. I, I think he looks a little quicker in those. <laughs> He might have lost a step down the road. Hey, what a year it's been for the <laughs> Blickensdurfer family. His playing in the state championship game with his Macon Meridian Hawks. His son, Drew, is the crew chief for Matt Kenseth. So you auto racing fans might recognize the name Drew Blickensdurfer. Helped Matt Kenseth win the Daytona 500 this year and also the second race of the season. So, boy, they've, they've got a little one-upsmanship in that family. At least getting to the state championship game gets him yeah. in the conversation. Right. 
Now we've gone zone with Maker Meridian trying to slow down the dribble penetration. Casey Hammond for three left open. Casey Hammond's been quiet in the first quarter. We expected him to be a big part of this game. Now the coaching staff says he has no fear when shooting and he has a knack for making big shots and that one was a big one to tie the game at 22. And he's not afraid to get on the floor. Yeah, very gutty player. Good overplay that time by Verhines. Bronson Verhines the steal back down on the offensive end, missed the shot. Ball is still free. He gets it back and laid it in. Verhines made three big plays against Dakota Getz. Uh, the passes are not really getting to Dakota, but he's also not going to meet his passes. He's waiting for the ball to come to him. Six points for Verhines, and his team now leads by a deuce at 24-22. Swigert, entry pass to Shastine. Back out now to Swigert. Shastine works baseline. Had a shot kind of blocked, knocked out of his hands. Not sure if that was going to be a shot attempt or an attempted pass, but nonetheless, the Cardinals come away with it. Couldn't see if it was a block or there was a foul. It wasn't called. I couldn't tell on the baseline. Fourth steal for the Cardinals as they credit that with a steal. Down the lane oh, and scooping it up and point. in is the younger of the two Verhines brothers. That's Dawson. The Verhines brothers came to play today for sure. Now it's Getz. Triple teamed as soon as he touched it. Like we saw Alex Kopians early in the third place game. He gets so much attention defensively. That's what Dakota Getz has that bullseye in his chest. That's him with the basketball now. Spinning and scoring. <laughs> Dakota gets with 14 of his teams. 24. Once he gets the ball down there, he's not going to be stopped. And uh, Verines has done a good job of denying him the ball on several occasions. But you've got to keep the ball out of his hands or else double down when he's got it. Hammond works the baseline but couldn't finish. Good shot, though. Good offensive possession. Now Swigert on the other end, his three is rimming out, and it's tipped uh -oh. up, but couldn't follow that time by Dotson, but then finally it is put in. Good timing. What a quarter, what a half for Dakota Getz. 16 points, 16 of his team's 26. Final 90 seconds to go here in this opening oh, half, double. and a steal. Here come the Hawks down now. Swigert works on Hammond, this time laid it in. Excellent double team by Burns. Able to knock the ball away. Shane Witzel wants timeout. Good run by Meridian. We'll see here on the replay. The steal, the results into the breakout basket. For the first lead in a while. Right in the middle of that again, Corey Burns. Right. He's got a nose for the basketball. Gets in the right place. Maybe he's a ball magnet. Because everywhere the ball is, there he is. Well, Woodlawn is still making good shots and taking advantage. They've been very effective. We mentioned they were shooting 80% at the end of the first quarter. They're still at 67%, so they're getting it done. And we remind you, from a programming standpoint, that the 2A boys basketball state tournament continues tonight. The third place game will be Marshall and Winnebago at 6.30 and the 2A title game will pit Massac County against Seton Academy 8.15 over most of these same stations on the IHSA television network. The Woodlawn also has nine turnovers so it doesn't matter what kind of percentage you shoot if you're going to be giving away nine possessions it's going to have to be 100%. Uh, but uh, the, uh, the turnover factor is definitely starting to mount up for uh, Woodlawn. It's got Meridian back in the basketball game and with the lead. A minute 20 to go here in what has been a very entertaining first half of action in this Class 1A boys basketball state title game here in Peoria. The Cardinals send out Josh Wiggs, both Verhines, Casey Hammond, and Jay Green, who brings the ball up the floor. I'm sorry that uh, Jay Green is also on the floor with the Verhines brothers. Meridian's back to the man-to-man. -man. They're switching defenses. Good job also of getting Burns out of the game so that he doesn't pick up his third foul. Here's Hammond. He's going to try the three again. Short, long rebound, tipped out, controlled by Jace Green. Another opportunity for the Cardinals. Can't cash it in, though. 
Final 45 seconds here. Will the Hawks hold for one? I would doubt it. They, uh, they like to play fast. <laughs> Swigert gets triple teamed and still scores. Okay 18 point one. first half for Dakota Getz. We'll hold for one or get the ball to Getz maybe. <laughs> what first. a performance right. Dakota Getz has put on. Meridian by four. Final 10 seconds of the half. You had a good shot right here. Six to shoot. Verheins off the glass. Takes it right to the board. Dawson Verheins gets it. Now it's Getz getting it in, and that's going to end it. The first half in the books. Meridian 30, Woodlawn 28. Terrific opening half Very of this Class team. 1A Boys Basketball State Championship game. We've got the medal ceremonies and the trophy for the third place teams coming up when we come back on the IHSA Television Network. But let's go to Lee Hawley standing by with the coach who's got the halftime lead. All right, we're with Jack Blickensdurfer. He likes the coat, I like the shoes. I think it's a heck of an ensemble. Uh, boy, Dakota Getz <laughs> put this team on his shoulder in the first half, didn't he? Well, he's an all stayer He should do that. And uh, I, don't, I think we've got to keep getting the ball into him. I'm sure they're going to try and foul the ball away from him. We've got to get something out of somebody else second half. And I thought it was... Uh, uh, a good entertaining half for the fans to watch, for the coach that gives you stomachs. I gotta go in and take some roll aids and take care of that kind of stuff, you know, and, and do that thing. But we gotta keep playing hard because they're playing hard the whole time. It's gonna be a great game and a, I hope it goes that way down the finish. All right, two point lead for you at halftime. Coach, good luck to you. Thanks a lot. All right, back after this on the IHSA TV network. At this time, Please meet the Braves of Anawan, who finished in fourth place, 1A, with a record of 27 and 8. The superintendent of Anawan High School, Joe Buresh. Principal, Brad Hulick. Athletic director, Matt Huber. Head coach, Ryan Brown. <laughs> Assistant coach, Zach DeMay. Assistant coach, Merritt Burns. Statistician, Tom Osborne. Now the players for the Braves, zero, Bryant Leibarger. Two, Sean Walker. Three, Jake DeJager. Five, Alex Kopiarns. Ten, Matt DeDecker. Thirteen, Heath Rakestraw. 15, Victor Abney. 22, Darren Williams. 24, Logan Hojibu. 30, Joe Sirens. 32, Mackenzie Chapman. 33, Tyler Peterson. 45, Lucas Hojibu. 50, Steve DeMay. Congratulations, Anawan Braves, fourth place, 2009, 1A Boys. At this time, please meet the Indians of Lewistown. Third place, 1A, a record of 26 and 8. Let's meet the superintendent of Lewistown, Bill King. Principal and athletic director, Gavin Srantz. Head coach, Brad Hatfield.
Assistant Coach, Joy McLaughlin. Assistant Coach, Mike Osborne. Assistant Coach, Jay Valencia. Scorekeeper, Carol Palmer. Statistician, Jeff Braden. And now the Indians players. Two, Scott Parrish. Four, Quinton Hatfill. Ten, Risty Johnson. Twelve, Brent Burroughs. Fourteen, Austin Howarder. Twenty, Ian Simpson. Twenty-two, Matt Sepich. Twenty-four, Tyler Clear. Thirty, Zach Duncan. Thirty-two, Trevor Schubert. Thirty-four, Carl Parrish. Forty-two, Kevin Battlefield. Forty-four, Zach Riley. And fifty, Joseph Yugovich. Congratulations, Lewistown Indians. Third place, 2009 1A boards. And now will Coach Brown and the captains of Anawan step forward and receive the fourth place trophy. And at this time, will Coach Hatfield and the captains of Lewistown step forward and receive the third place trophy, 2009. Congratulations to both schools, both towns, and both teams for a great 2009 1A tournament. And our congratulations to both Anawan and Lewistown for great seasons, making it all the way here to Carver Arena. Taking home a couple of big trophies, third place for the Braves, or check that fourth place for the Braves and third place for the Indians. I can't uh, keep them all straight there. Kind of tough to do. On the same warpath, though. <laughs> uh, quite a first half, uh, especially for a young man, Dakota Getz, going to Iowa beat a tight end. Their basketball program might want to talk to him a little bit, too, after that first half. Well, he's going to be a first-round draft choice for the Iowa Intermural program. There's no question about that in basketball. <laughs> Tremendous basketball player, and he got 11 of their 15 points in that second quarter. The coach uh, has got to find out a way to keep the ball away from him. He's been the, ma the major difference in this first half. Woodlawn trails here at the half, but they shot the ball uh, at a great percentage in the first half. It was 60% late in the first half. And what a great lift Josh Wiggs gave off the bench. The big 6'7 uh, sophomore got four baskets, eight points. So, uh, you know, that's kind of an unexpected gift for them. Very entertaining first half with uh, Macon Meridian uh, leading here at the half. And uh, so often the polls are askew. You know, because they're voted on by people all across the state, and a lot of the guy, uh, people don't actually get to see the teams play. Boy, this one was nailed right on, two versus three, and uh, they're right up here today. Yeah, and then, and both teams are, you know, playing like they're the two and three teams in the state. One major thing that I thought happened in the first half, Lee, is when Swigert picked up his second foul with six minutes to go in the second quarter, and uh, excuse me, in the first quarter, and then took a charge there in the second quarter that uh, was obviously a charge call, but they cannot afford to lose Swigert. He's the heart and soul in getting the ball to people. One of the things that we talked about earlier, I thought they, that the defense that Shastine did on uh, Verhines was pretty good. Verhines only has nine points, but 
uh, Shastine's chased him the entire uh, 84 feet. Two-point game here at the half. It's Bacon Meridian leading Woodlawn 30-28 in our 1A state championship game. Back after this local timeout. And welcome back to our National Association of Realtors halftime show. The NAR wants you to know that home ownership is an investment in your future. If you're going to buy or sell a home, contact a realtor, a member of the NAR. Woodlawn trailing here by two to Macon Meridian. 30 to 28 at the half back at Tournament Central. Lee Hall, Roger Lowe, let's take a look at those first half statistics. Brought to us by Menards, save big money at Menards. And uh, both teams with a pretty good shooting percentage there in the first half, Coach. Macon getting to the line six out of nine times. That's, the, that's been the difference. The shooting percentage, as you said, for Woodlawn is tremendous. A great game plan by Coach uh, Witzel. Did a nice job of getting the ball into scoring areas. Rebounds fairly even as well as we turn to page two. Nine turnovers for Woodlawn and uh, 16 points in the paint to 14. Uh, a lot of good fundamental basketball there. Second chance points, Macon going to the basket and uh, uh, Getz had at least a couple of those points. Getz with 18 of the 30 points for Macon Meridian and Dawson Verhines with nine to lead the way. Wiggs with eight off the bench. Right, and you know, Bronson Verhines with six points, but he had to work real hard to get those six points, but they've got to find a stop for Getz. If, the, if Woodlawn wants to win the state championship, they got to keep it out of his hands. Back at Carver Arena for the second half after this local timeout. Thirty twenty-eight, making ready a halftime lead over Woodlawn in this Class 1A Boys Basketball State Championship game. Let's take a look at the highlights which shaped the first 16 minutes of play here in the state title game. Well, you see good inside work by Kyle Four uh, on a second shot basket and a foul. Baseline jumper uh, by Wiggs. He had a big first half. I think he had eight points in the first half. And uh, Casey Hammonds did hit one shot, but he's going to have to really get hot in the second half. I thought. Uh, Burns, Corey Burns had just a really good first half energy wise and uh, showed how much he was missed yesterday. And of course, 18 points for the leading scorer, Dakota Getz. He has his making Meridian Hawks in front by two. Third quarter action around the corner after these messages from our network sponsors. Back at Carver Arena, downtown Peoria, Class 1A Boys Basketball State Championship game. Making Meridian 30. Woodlawn 28, Kurt Pegler, Cal Hubbard, Lee Hall, our IHSA Television Network crew. 16 more minutes to play before we crown a new Class 1A Boys Basketball State Champion. And it's uh, imperative that uh, Woodlawn finds a way to keep the ball out of Getz's hands or double team him. If you don't double team him, he beats you. If you uh, do double team him, you leave shooters over on the outside and you're going to have to rotate. So that's definitely been addressed at halftime. But I think. Uh, Brines, Dawson Brines had a great first half, a uh, real good floor game. Getz comes away with the first rebound of the second half. Jay Screen, Bronson Verhines, Dawson Verhines, Casey Hammond, and Kyle Bolt start the game, or start the third quarter, that is, for Woodlawn. Corey Burns, Dakota Getz, who's got the hot hand. Jacob Chastain, Trent Swigert, and Kyle Four on the floor for the Hawks right now, and this is Dakota Getz's personal playground here. Uh, and it's too late to guard him once he gets the ball. You've got to keep it out of his hands, whatever you need to do. Eight out of nine shooting for his 20 points, and there's a nice move by Dawson Verhines to Brian, score traffic. He's got a knack with the basketball. Nobody picked up right Corey Burns. <laughs> Corey Burns doesn't have any back off in him, does he? Well, he's he goes hard. He's the energizer for this team, and nobody picked him up. All the way down and laid it in. Four point advantage for Meridian. There's Jay Sweeney, gives the ball up now. This is Dawson Verhines, the younger of the two Verhines brothers. He's a sophomore. Bronson with the basketball is a senior. Crossover dribble, working on Shastine. Lost the dribble. Ball is on the floor. Burns came up with a steal. Great job. Double team when Bronson turns his back on the ball. Shastin penetrates and attacks from the right side. Well, the, in, the offensive def defensive intensity has been good all day, but it's really picked up in this half for Meridian. And another steal, and Dakota gets just flips it ahead to Burns, who's going to be whistled for a foul as he was bodying up, going after the ball. He and Jay Screen with a foot race. Uh, he must have called a hold on it because, yep, he, had, he hold his, held his shirt. What a good hustle by both players. I beg your pardon, that was Casey Hammond in there for, Hammond, right. for the Cardinals. 
The two guys you would expect to be on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> It's also the third foul on Burns. And that is a key foul. He played with foul trouble. He had four fouls yesterday against Anawan. And as we mentioned earlier, it kind of limited his effectiveness. Verhines for three is short. Gets the rebound. He's got seven boards to go along with his points. He's putting forth an all-tournament type performance here. No question about that. Loose ball stolen by the Cardinals. It's Hammond, one-on-one -on -one with Swigert. Burns tries to help out. Off the glass, can't get it to go. Ball is still loose. Corralled by Shastine. Now the Hawks come back in transition. Making Meridian with it. It's again gets. Good power. Good job of controlling the ball all the way up the floor. Gets did a nice job of staying out of the lane till the last second. Eight-point Meridian lead. Biggest of the afternoon. Chase Green with a tough shot. Much needed. Stop the bleeding. You're right, the Cardinals really needed something coached there, and they got it from Green. Shastine left open. His three is no good. Ball is out of bounds, and it's going to be off of the Cardinals. Never. So Macon Meridian will have the ball when we come back. Timeout on the floor. Good start for the Hawks. They've got a six-point lead. Back with more from Peoria after this local timeout. Macon Meridian, the 38-32 lead here as we are about midway through this third quarter. And we are with Jack Lickensdurfer's son, Drew, who you mentioned, Kurt, is the crew chief for Matt Kenseth one Daytona earlier this year. What's more exciting for you? Duh, the Daytona 500 or this? Well, as a family man, this is more exciting to me. You know, what I, uh, what I do in, on the weekends normally is, is business. And, of course, I love to do it, but being able to see my dad come out here and, and the making community uh, support a team like this is pretty special. Obviously, success on a, on a major league stage for you. And another bucket there for the Hawks. Tell me what you learned from your dad down through the years, him being kind of a tough guy coach. I learned to be a competitor. He taught me that you can't take anything for granted and, and you don't want to lose. More than anything, you expect to win and you don't want to lose. And that's what he taught me from an, from an early age. And that's why I try and teach the guys I work with now. Obviously, it worked well for you. Continued Thank success. You. Thank you very much. All right. Drew Blickensdurfer, the crew chief for Daytona 500 winner, Matt Kenseth. Pretty cool stuff, guys. Well, you've got that right. And at least with Dad getting into the championship game, he at least comes into the conversation when you talk about highlights for 2009, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's kind of hard to beat the Super Bowl of uh, stock car racing, that's for sure. That is for sure, but but an interesting thing to hear the son talk about what the dad actually yeah. taught him. I thought that was uh, very telling. Well, and, and Jack Blickensurf was telling us yesterday that his son went out there to North Carolina without a job, just knocked on some doors, and you know you have to start kind of uh, at the bottom of the food chain and, and move up when it comes into those jobs like that. It didn't happen overnight, and uh, now he's the crew chief of the Daytona 500 champion. So congratulations to him, and right now he's probably a nervous wreck trying to cheer his father's team on. Uh, it's pretty hard to sit up in the stand. Um, right now is a key, key time of the game for Woodlawn. They need to uh, stop the bleeding, uh, slow gets down, and get something happening on the offensive end. But okay. right now, there's not much going on down there. There they got a stop on Getz as he had a rare miss. Now it's Casey Hammond. His three is no good off the heel of the rim. Chased down, however, by Wiggs, who's checked into the game. Now the ball is on the floor, still loose. Verhines comes away with it, and he's fouled. Jacob Chastine, the guilty party. That went on for a long time. Uh, loose ball. Uh, both teams are really playing hard. They're doing good, good things. You can see in this replay here that it was just a scrum for the ball. And a foul called. Burns took a hard fall there. Good way to get open. <laughs> yeah, Casey Hammond missed the shot, pulled his jersey over his head, and walked back to play defense here. Uh, just tell a little bit by the body language of the Cardinals, they feel like they've taken a pretty good punch here. They're getting frustrated. They need to keep their composure through this tough run. You can see the Meridians really picked up their intensity as well, and you can see it in their eyes. Here's Burns. Gives he it off to four from the foul line. His shot is short for Hines high up to get the defensive rebound. Quickly, the Cardinals back up the floor. Hines, or it's a Hammond with the pass down to Verhines and a foul. We're going to see the pass over the top. And again, 
Dawson Verheim is in the right place at the right time. He's had a big game so far. Now Dawson Verheim's called by his coach the best defender on the team. As we mentioned, he took over the point guard duties last year. In the lone Cardinals defeat this year, their loss to Cesar Valier on the 3rd of February, he had 30 points in that loss and played pretty well yesterday. He had a 14-point and five-block game against Lewistown. Ball is out of bounds, and it's going to go back to the Cardinals, so they've got a chance to make this a three-point possession here. I don't think the officials saw that one. Must have had a back turn. Under three and a half minutes to go here, third quarter. State championship game for Class 1A boys basketball here in Peoria. Tough shot no, off the glass for Dawson Verhines. Right when you think he's out of control, somehow he pulls himself together and gets the ball to the basket. Now it's Corey Burns working baseline, slips the ball in traffic to four, had a shot blocked. Verhines comes away with it. This is Bronson Verhines. He's picked from behind, though. Burns came away with the steal. Now it's back to the front court. Kyle Four, Trent Swiger. Back to four at the foul line. Zips a nice pass job. down to Jacob Chastain. Good unselfish play. Very nice job by uh, Kyle Four. He did a nice job of being under control for a big man in the open court. Yeah, six foot four, 225 pound kind of wide body down low, but runs the floor well and, and is not afraid to step out and hit that jumper from the foul line. Here's Bolt. Now open is Jess Hart. Jesse Hart couldn't get that one to go down. And we got a foul way out at the perimeter. Landed on the head. Slow to get up is Dawson Verhines. He's getting himself up right now, but he, you're right, may have, uh, see if we can get a better look at that collision. Oh. Got his back at. Fell and snapped his head back. Head, head on the floor. He's going to come out of the game now. Luke Simmons is going to come in, so maybe he can kind of knock the cobwebs out. Yeah, give him a little chance to regroup. I don't think he's been out of the game yet. Seven point making Meridian advantage at 43 36 as we approach the two minute mark left here, third quarter. Chastine goes inside to Getz. Spins, shoots it, can't get it to go. Wiggs with the defensive rebound. Swigert picked up his dribble out front and was in serious trouble, but they end up getting a really good shot in the post. Good aggressive man-to-man -man defense here by the Hawks. Bolts pass inside is kicked back out. Now Wiggs on the floor trying to dig it out with Dakota Getz. And Getz evidently hit the sideline because the possession arrow or the, the ball is going to go in favor of the Indians. Now we're going to see Dawson Verhines check back in, so he must be all right. No worse for the wear after snapping his head back. So he comes in. He sends Simmons back to the bench. When the kids are growing up, you've got to teach them to get on the floor after the ball. These kids have been getting on the floor after the ball for a long time, and it's an instinct for them. We've got a lot of bodies down today. Good unselfish play by both these teams. Both the coaching staff said that they were... Uh, some of the highlights of the season came on unselfish plays. Here's Swigert now after the steal all the way down. He attacks from the right-hand side. Chastain has done a very good job on the defensive end of making the day very difficult on uh, Bronson Verines. Julius on the side for right in the middle of that. We've got camera operators right in the middle of the action, but we're bringing those pictures to you right at home, folks, so you can get... A front row seat to what's going on here at Carver Arena. I was afraid something was going to come down on <laughs> Swigert's face. That was the concern right there because we had two kids over the top of him. Again, what a game that this young man played yesterday. Never came off the floor in his 32 minutes. 18 points, six assists. He only had three turnovers, and he had the ball in his hands the whole game. You saw it momentarily there. He was kind of fixing the wrap that he has on... His thigh, he had a bruised quadricep muscle, which he suffered in the regional final. Really was kind of unsure how it would uh, impact his play, but all he's done is kind of gritted his teeth and came out and played. He had a very tough assignment against Ridgeview's Bradley Gear and shut him down in the super sectional. And 
he's no worse for the wear out there. It doesn't look like it slowed him down much. He's still pretty quick. Josh Wiggs. Good pass down to Hammonds. Pump oh, fake. Tried to score. Pass. Couldn't get it to go, though. A minute to go here, third quarter. Eight-point Meridian lead. Swigert's going to try and bring this thing back out. Maybe they'll try to milk some clock here. I know sometimes you say, Cal, this is a hard thing to do. When your team is in attack mode, it's kind of hard to spread the floor. Yeah, they, they need to do a better job of controlling the ball than they did yesterday. And they are playing against man-to-man, -man, which they're used to. Nope. Try to shorten the game here and hang on for one final possession here in this third quarter. Hammonds yep. out aggressively guarding Logan Washford, who's checked in the game now for the Hawks. 30 seconds to go here, third quarter. Man-to-man -man delay, you dribble the ball a lot more. Against zone delay, you pass it a lot more. And these kids are very comfortable dribbling the basketball. Well, you still steal. have to meet your passes. Yeah. <laughs> Near steal that time. Bronson Verhine saw the pass coming, but it was just a half a step too, too slow. Now 10 seconds to go in the quarter. Okay, you see the last second play, what they got set up. Some type of penetration, I would imagine. Shastine couldn't get it to go. Wiggs came away with the rebound, and that's the end of the quarter. Eight minutes of basketball to go in the state championship game, and Macon Meridian has a 44-36 lead. Back with more from the state finals after this local timeout. Eight minutes to play in the 1A state championship game. It's Meridian with the eight-point lead over Woodlawn. We're here with two ladies responsible for three-fifths of the Woodlawn starters. Nancy Verhines, Pam Green. Uh, tell me about having two boys and a nephew on this team. That's got to be pretty fun. It's been a marvelous season, outstanding. The kids are great. Coaches are great. Fans are great. It, it's just been wonderful. A little bit of stress with two of them. Okay, I'll take it. Obviously, uh, you and Grandma Betty McKenzie and the two of you are responsible for the talent on this team and the family because you ha you're the common denominator. I kind of doubt that. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about the sign at the edge of Woodlawn. The sign says, uh, it says, last one in Woodlawn, turn out the lights. We're going to Peoria. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I doubt there's anybody back in Woodlawn watching this because the whole town's here, guys and hoping for a comeback in the fourth quarter. Yeah, both teams bringing quite a fan base here. And whoever the last person was out, they're probably still out because the whole town is here, right? I don't think anybody went back last <laughs> night. <laughs> As we get set to begin our fourth quarter, we'll share with you those third quarter statistics in a minute. It's important for both teams to hold their composure right here starting the fourth quarter. Play through mistakes, play through calls that they don't agree with. They've got to keep their head in the game. Here's Burns, lost the dribble, looking for help. It's Swigert, finds Getz on the baseline, double teamed immediately, now Burns. Hawks are very patient on this offensive set. Pass through the legs, though, of Shastine. Steal for Casey Hammond. In on Swigert, puts it up, and the foul's gonna be a blocking foul against Swigert. Casey Hammond to the free throw line. Let's take a look at those third quarter numbers, brought to you by Menard, save big money at Menard's. You can see on the board that the stats are pretty much even, except the, free, uh, the shooting percentage for Woodlawn came down quite a bit in the third quarter. I don't, I'm not sure whether they won for seven or, um, they were three for 11 from the field in the third quarter, uh, and uh, Macon Meridian ended up being, uh, shooting around five to 50%. Um, the, whenever you're delaying or taking a little air out of the ball, you want to make sure you make passes where other people are expecting it. And that's what forced the turnover that time where Burns made a bounce pass behind his back to uh, our side, put the ball out of his side and the other kid was not looking at him, Chastine. So, and I would, I think we're in a one, three, one trap now. Good call. They break it, and it's Getz going to try to attack. He can't get it to go. He wanted a foul. No call. Verhine sometime had it stolen away. It's Burns, and he finds Shastine. Three-point play. What a, what a turn of play by Burns. It, it really is. The same kid that made the turnover came back to make the steal after a call you didn't get. And then a, a foul out of frustration. Corey Burns just playing his heart out here with the yeah. steal and the assist. A huge turn of events. He just 
That little inner Jazzer Bunny kind of player. He's always there. Always, wherever there's trouble, he's going to show up. Shastine completes the three-point play. Give him nine points and give his team a 10-point lead. 47-37, under seven minutes to go. Need a good possession here by Woodlawn. They don't need to panic. Hammond creating and scoring. I'm sorry, that's that Dawson Ber Verhines. That big game for Verhines. He's uh, really showing a lot of poise for a sophomore. Now it's Getz on the low block, but he's fouled before he could get the shot off. Foul's going to go against Verhines. Let's take a look at it. You see Getz takes it one way, comes back the other way. And that is a critical foul, and that is foul number five. The foul was called on the floor before the, uh, Getz got to the basket. That is a crucial foul. Dawson Verhines now disqualified with 6.20 to go. But you do take that gamble when you keep your kid on the floor with four fouls with that much time left in the game. Coach made the gamble. So Luke Simmons comes in in his place. And again, the Hawks spread the floor, and that is Casey Hammond with the foul. Well, a lot of time left in this game. Anything can happen. Plenty of time left. Six minutes to go. But against that half-court trap, it's really hard to dribble the basketball. Burns gets the ball into Shastine. Kind of a three-man game at the top. Now it's Dakota Getz trying to save it, and the ball is out of bounds. Just a bad pass. No, a bad pass was tipped, coming out of Shastine's hand. The official on the outside had it all the way. So the Macon Meridian Hawks will maintain possession. Cardinals want timeout. And so Woodlawn we'll takes timeout, time and we'll take timeout. 47-39, Meridian leads the state championship game. Back after these messages and a word from your local stations. Here's a look at Walgreens' picture-perfect moment. Walgreens, a proud sponsor of the IHSA's Do What's Right Good Sportsmanship campaign. That's in that Macon Meridian fan section where they've got their faces painted green and even black and white. That was a good timeout that time by Coach Weigert because uh, Dawson Verhines, who's been the most uh, effective offensive weapon, has just fouled out of the game. Steven DeClerc, who's working the state championship game, is calling his final game. He'll retire after 30 plus years. What a great way as to an go official. out. Yeah, get a chance to work the state championship game. He's from Vandalia. Swigert is fouled by Casey Hammond. It's way too much playing by the, with the ball by Swigert. The ball needs to move. Be a lot more effective if the ball is moving on the pass right now with everyone trying to trap. Three fouls now on Hammond to the free throw line goes Swigert. Well, he's the young man that runs the show, and he's going to have the ball in his hands, certainly, in the final five minutes and 42 seconds of this one. I agree with that, but I also agree that he needs to do a job of reading the defense and seeing what's available. And he's done a great job the whole tournament, but uh, right now your state championship hopes are on the line and you've got to make good decisions. Made one, missed one. 39-40, uh, 48-39, the lead is nine points. Hammond, tough shot, in traffic. Forced the action. Boy, it's Burns that comes down with it. He's in the middle of everything. Here's Swigert now, being chased by Hammond. Got a 1-3-1 one, one trap going right now. Ball tough, and whenever you catch the ball against the trap, you've got to have ball, be ball tough. It doesn't look like um, Meridian's really trying to score. They're trying to have possession. They've got, their best, they've got their best passer in the high post, which is a really good move. Reach in foul is going to be whistled against Bronson Verhines. Verhines has those long arms. He's six foot five, and he's trying to harass 5'9 Corey Burns. Burns to the free throw line. 5'9, 150. This young man is all heart. 
Much better job that time Meridian did of getting people in the right positions and moving the basketball in the pass. But you really don't want to leave it, leave it up to people shooting free throws. You want to move the ball and avoid the foul. 4.51 to go here in the state championship game. Meridian has a 48-39 lead. Back with more on the IHSA Television Network. Time now for this National Association of Realtors trivia question. This school has made the most title game appearances. Can you name them? We're giving you a slight hint here that Lee Hall's purple new jacket is a key. Thank you. Thank you very much. What's the question? Which team has made the most title appearances and your jacket is a little bit of a clue? Oh, okay. Not Peoria Spalding? No, not your alma mater. No, okay. No. <laughs> we'll have that answer for you in just a moment. We've got four minutes and 48 seconds of basketball to play here in this Class 1A state championship game. Woodlawn needs to get something. Uh, Offensive foul against K.C. Hammond. Title game championship appearances. And the answer to our National Association of Realtor trivia question, we had it up there for just a brief second just to tease you. It is Harvey Thornton. Seven title game appearances. Their team colors are purple and white. And purple, of course, the hue Rocky that, Hill, baby. that Rocky Lee Hill. Hall is wearing. Lee Hall and Rocky Hill in the same Rocky sentence. Rocky Hill fan right here. Meanwhile, Trent Swigert back to the foul line. In that possession, um, you saw that uh, Corey, Casey Hammond uh, lost his cool and uh, forced an offensive foul. Now. Woodlawn needs to gain their composure on the offensive end and have some good possessions. They've really been struggling at moving the basketball and running anything offensively, and I think that's a credit to Meridian's defense. They have really picked up their defensive intensity. Four forty to go now. Woodlawn trying to make up an eleven-point deficit, and the ball's out of bounds, in and out of the hands of Bronson Verhines. When your point guard goes out, it just makes everything, just your timing isn't quite the same. You're not getting the ball in the same place on the floor. Um. Well, at this point, the clock is as big an enemy for making Meridian as the Cardinals are. They're uh, trying to milk it with every possession here. The clock is your opponent, but you still got to be aggressive at going to the basket. You can't stand out here at half court. Shastine is triple three, teamed. With three people around the ball, I guarantee you somebody's open. Quick hands and a steal. The Cardinals come away with it. That's Luke Simmons and an opportunity now for the Cardinals to score points with the, with the clock stopped. Right now, the, the defense is putting the pressure on so that the offense is backed up to the half court line. The ball has got to be getting into the middle of the floor on the dribble or the pass. Uh, and there's got to be some attack toward the basket going below the free throw line extended right now. Jack Blickensdorf for the Macon Meridian head coach just ripped his jacket off and went down halfway down the floor and screamed at Jacob Chastine to be a little more strong with the basketball. He didn't take his shoes off, did he? Nope. Oh, that's good. He just went sans jacket. He's still wearing the, the sneakers. When he goes barefoot, we got a problem. <laughs> Verhines cashes into the foul line. Now the fa uh, backcourt pressure applied by the Cardinals. Swigert dribbles right through it, and then a reach-in foul, a near steal that time, but a reach-in foul is going to be called against Verhines. You see the ball being brought up the floor, dribbling in traffic. Ball goes off the foot. <clears throat> well, now that foul puts Macon Meridian in the double bonus. That's yeah. the tenth team foul against Woodlawn. So two foul shots each trip down the floor now after the fouls from here on out. Taking care of the basketball and shooting free throws is a key for Macon Meridian, but they do need to stay in somewhat of an attack mode and make sure the basket's being honored by. Uh, Woodlawn, because they're just teeing off at the half court. And Woodlawn needs to get something happening on the offensive end, get a quick timeout and put some pressure on. We're under four minutes to go. Lead back to 11 for Macon Meridian. Jace Green is at the scores table. He'll check in in the next whistle for the Cardinals. Verhines. Now Kyle Bolt to the foul line. Lost the dribble. Hangs, fires, had to get a shot, but Dakota Getz is going to be whistled for the foul. Really rough call. He's had a hand on the top of the ball all the time. But um, anyway, Bolt did a nice job of taking the ball to the basket and trying to get a shot off in the lane. 
That's probably the first time anybody's ever un, uh, disagreed with a call, isn't it? First time in, <laughs> in history, yeah. right, Coach? In the state championship history, yeah. I'm sure. I know I never agreed with any, I disagreed with any of them for sure. Maybe agreed. <laughs> Fundamentally sound basketball player in Kyle Bull. Good passer, good rebounder. He really, he really has good hands. I mean, he does a lot of good things in the middle of that. Good stroke at the free throw line, too. Bringing in a uh, player now to help with, with pressure. Yeah, that's Jace Green who's Jason checked Green, in. So right. Green is in and Bolt is out. They got full court pressure right now trying to make something happen with the defense. Getz is going to trigger from under the basket. Into Burns who flips it ahead to Swigert. Dribbles right through the heart of that pressure and then brings it back out. Smart move. And he's bumped right at the perimeter Good and the call. foul's going to go against Green. Good call. That's the kid you want at the line. Quite a luxury to have one kid that can get the ball up the floor against four different people. <laughs> he's got such quickness and explosiveness uh, when he's dribbling the basketball. Swigert a 78% free throw shooter. You look up and down this roster, Kyle Ford is a 75% free throw shooter. Shastine is a 78% foul shooter. So they've got some guys. Good position to be in. Yeah, in crunch time, it makes, that are comfortable. It makes sense to go free throws and layups at the end of the game. We'll split those foul shots there, though. Yeah. Ten-point lead again. You'd rather not shoot it and move the basketball. Hammond's going to try a three. Can't get it. Dakota gets on the floor to save it. Now it's Burns around a couple of players. Gets the pass up to Shastine again. He's going to bring it back out. Good move. The Hawks have been very disciplined. They've passed up some opportunities for some layups just to run some more clock. And now the foul is going to be on Josh Wiggs. Anytime you're getting pressure, you got to make crisp passes and you got to go meet your passes. Uh, if you do that, you're, it's, it's, it's a good thing you get to walk to the line because you've executed properly. You have to be very impressed with the way the Hawks are running the floor here in this fourth quarter and late in the third quarter. Most of their games during the regular season were very lopsided, so they're not accustomed to being in this run the clock out business. And they're running the show as if they have practiced this every day and they're accustomed to doing this. What a job that uh, Shastain has done. He hasn't scored a lot today, but what a job he's done on the defensive end by shutting Verhines down. That jump ball, held ball with the possession arrow in favor of the Cardinals, so the ball will stay on that side of the floor. 2.53 to go here in this Class 1A Boys Basketball State title game. Meridian with a 12-point lead, 55-43. We're glad you're alongside here on the IHSA Television Network. We've got another championship game for you tonight, the Class 2A boys. We've got a third-place game for you at 6.30. Championship game about 8.15 from Carver Arena here. Oh, good play. Ball was headed into Josh Wiggs and knocked out of his hands. By Burns again. He reacts to the ball so quickly and strip, stripped the ball out. Here's Verhines. He's guarded by Shastine. Crossover dribble on him now. Now he's double teamed. Burns comes over to help, and oh, Burns is going to be a good whistled for the foul. Sometimes you can be over aggressive. That'll be foul number four on Corey Burns. Now we're seeing Jesse Hart come into the game for the Cardinals. He'll send Luke Simmons back to the Woodlawn bench. With a 12 point lead, you really don't want to be putting him at the free throw line. You get shot, uh, baskets while. Um, the clock has stopped. Bronson Verhines to the free throw line. He had a double double yesterday in the victory over Lewistown in the state semifinals. 16 points and 10 rebounds. He's been held to eight points tonight, but he has been very active on both ends of the floor. Especially defensively, right. Trying to make a correction here on, on the clock time. Good time right now, though. With two made free throws, you have a dead ball situation where you can bring the pressure again, too. So it could be, uh, this could be a key portion of the game right here for Woodlawn to get back in. For Hines missed the foul shot. Jace Green comes down with it underneath the basket in traffic, and he missed the shot, but he's going to get some free throws out of the deal. Very good effort by Green to get the second shot opportunity. Dakota Getz has just picked up his fourth foul. So you've got Corey Burns and Dakota Getz each on the floor right now for making Meridian with four fouls. And so it's Jace Green, 6'3", senior guard, to the free, free throw line. 
Just saw an interview with his mother a few minutes ago. He's the cousin to the Verheins brothers. A family affair here. The success of the Woodlawn Cardinals this season. With some clutch shots in a 13-point performance against Oakville in the super sectional game. He had an eight-point third quarter, which helped put the Cardinals over the top and sent them to state for the first time. Game still very reachable for Woodlawn. Swigert is bumped. That foul's going to go against Verhines. The quality of play has really slipped. We're having a lot of fouls and a, uh, a lot of looking at the scoreboard and trying to figure that out. Kids just need to play. Stay after it. Well, Bronson Verhines has now picked up his fourth foul. Here with 2.38 to go and walk back down to the free throw line and shoot some more foul shots. It's Swigert again. The officials have done a nice job in this game. What is a foul now was also a foul in the first quarter. That hasn't changed. It's just the kids uh, have not adjusted to what's going on out there. Swigert is stuffing his stat line here now. 13 points and eight assists in this state championship game. They're good numbers. Two and a half minutes to play in this Class 1A boys basketball title game. Woodlawn with the basketball and trailing 56-45. Here's Green. Couldn't get it. The shot was contested. Verhines goes to the far corner, and I should say Wiggs, to track it down. Now it's Casey Hammond. His shot is online and in. It's a three. And a timeout called by Woodland. Woodlawn with a nice job on that timeout. And Lee Hall, what do you have? Guys, a, a footnote to the uh, Woodlawn season. Uh, Shane Whistle, as you know, a graduate of Woodlawn. Uh, his junior high coach, his first year is Mike Richardson, who's doing play-by-play -play for Woodlawn now. Mike, can we talk to you real quick? Are you on the air? Fine, you're going ahead. Uh, you had Shane in your first year as junior high coach, is that right? Well, we revised our youth program at Woodlawn. Shane Whistle was our point guard. And tell me, and you had some of these kids, was your last year, right? Yeah, this, this senior group right here uh, was the last group that I had as seniors at our grade school, correct? And you're doing play-by-play, -play and you probably do a lot of coaching there too, don't you? <laughs> well, it's, I've never lost a game with these headphones on, so it's been a, a great experience for our kids, and we've had a blast up here. And, uh, glad that they've been a part of this experience. Yeah, you must feel pretty proud to have uh, your boys from different generations be a part of it all. Yeah, 28 years over the time, it sort of gets away from a person, but uh, yeah, it is, and you know, it's not over, and we're gonna have a big celebration tomorrow, but individually for these kids, I can't say enough about them and their families, what they brought to our community over the years. It's been fantastic. Very successful year, congratulations, thanks a lot. Thank you, brother. All right, Mike Richardson, the man behind the success of Woodlawn this season, guys. <laughs> Thank you, Lee. Here you look at the foul trouble. Burns gets Swigert for making Meridian. Woodlawn has Hammond and Bronson Verhines each with four fouls in the final 215 of this one. That three cut it under 10, and that always makes it shakier with a lead. Gets gets it across the line as he flips it up to Swigert. Now to Corey Burns, who missed a shot. The ball is still loose. Verhines goes back to get it. Now here comes Woodlawn up the floor. Wiggs. It's a six-point game. Now Swigert across the timeline. Under two minutes to go here. Reach in foul. That's going to go against Jesse Hart. See, Meridian is satisfied to stay out and not shoot the shot. And by missing the layup, they, they need possession more than they need any more points. And uh, I think that's why Coach was so upset. But uh, you got a wide open layup. It's hard to tell a kid to back off and not shoot it. Make your free throws and you'll be fine. In the final five minutes of this fourth quarter, Macon Meridian is now 9 of 12 from the free throw line. Woodlawn's, Chastain split those. Woodlawn's doing a really good job of putting the, the heat on defensively. 140 to go. It's a seven-point lead for Macon Meridian. Jace Green, three-point opportunity. You can see that, you can see here that uh, Woodlawn is still in the attack mode, taking the ball to the basket. And uh, this is a really good play by Jason Green. He gets bumped, and he still gets the ball up. Nice and smooth. 
And Corey Burns has just picked up his fifth foul. And one of your primary ball handlers fouls out. And it's now a two-possession game. So Burns to the bench with five fouls, and coming in to replace him is Casey Dodson. And it's green to the free throw line to try to complete the three-point play. Fifty-seven, fifty-three, a four-point Meridian lead. Ninety seconds to go. They're doing a really nice job of uh, denying Swigert the ball. Hammond's really working hard on it. So it's Chastine and Swigert playing catch now at the timeline. Now the double team comes in. Kyle Four comes out to help. And he's fouled. Another good free throw shooter. Ball's in his hands. Always comes down to free throw shooting. 75% free throw shooter, 66 of 88 entering today's contest. It's also about when you make them. These are big free throws for both teams. Good stroke. Good confident stroke. Suffered a foot injury in Tuesday night's victory in the normal super sectional over Ridgeview. But uh, not enough to sideline him from contributing here. He makes both free throws, and Meridian's lead is six with 107 to play. Timeout, Jack Blickensdurfer. Good timeout by Coach Blickensdurfer. He's going to probably set something up so he can delay the ball getting up the floor and let the ball, instead of letting the ball run up the floor, try to take as much time as he can. Uh, and for Woodlawn, they're going to want to get down the floor and get a good shot and a quick shot. Uh, but they want the best available shot as quickly as they can. And if they can score, to try to get a timeout. And uh, that's going to be hard since they don't have any left. You saw the schedule for tonight's game. We've got a third place game tonight. Coming away between Marshall and Winnebago. That's at 630. And then the state championship game in Class 2A. Seton Academy and Massac County 815 over most of these same stations on the IHSA television network. But here we've got a minute seven to go in this Class 1A boys basketball title game between a pair of teams which have never before played for a state championship. 30 and 1 Woodlawn, 30 and 2 Macon Meridian. Here's our game reset for you. The six point lead for Macon Meridian. Woodlawn is out of timeouts. The Hawks have two more. Both teams now in the double bonus. And perhaps an important statistic, the Macon Meridian Hawks have the possession error. Exactly. It's uh, as close as Woodlawn's been in a long time. And they're, they're going to have to have a good offensive possession here, get a basket, and keep putting the pressure on defensively. But both teams need to play with compo composure right now. Anything can happen. Who's going to make the plays? Bronson for Hines to bring the ball up. One minute to go. Casey Hammond, three from the top, rims out. Ball is on the floor, and Verhines comes away with it. So the Cardinals maintain the offensive possession with 50 seconds. Hammond is willing to take the big shot and had the ball all the way down. Three ball, Jesse Hart can't get it. Tipped around, fought for. Hawks come away with it. Ball is still loose. It's Getz with it. He leads the pass to Swigert, beats everybody down the floor and laid it in. Big basket. It's an eight-point lead, and that might have been the nail in the coffin. No fouls for the Meridian. Jay Screen can't get it to go. Gets tips it around, controlled by Macon Meridian. The Hawks are going to win their first ever state championship. Dakota Getz did a great job of tapping the ball out on that last possession. 11.6 to go. We've also got some extracurriculars going on. People need to keep composure. Keep their composure right here. And Trent Swiger to the free throw line to put this one to bed. And how about the basketball coach the last couple of years in Macon County? Maroa Forsyth, Warrensburg Latham, Final Four teams, championship teams, and now Macon Meridian. Gonna coach, bring the trophy those back. Those coaches are doing a good job, aren't they? That's uh, very good basketball. Macon County's had good basketball forever, and uh, it's nice to see that they got a chance to bring a state championship trophy back to Macon County. Another Dakota one. gets coming off the floor. 22 points and eight rebounds for the Iowa football recruit. Standing ovation in his final high school basketball game 
huge first half. He had 18 points in the first half. He gets a huge hug there from Corey Burns. Just four points in the second half, but that's only because Macon Meridian was spreading the floor. He was having his way for the first 16 minutes of this one. Kyle Forrest gonna come out, huge applause, big hug from the head coach. Winning is fun. Winning is fun. But the competing is the best part of it. And Swigert tries to finish this one off at the foul line. And now they couldn't get a timeout. They wanted a timeout maybe to empty some of the players on the Make em Meridian bench. Not going to happen. Woodlawn brings it down. Final possession of this basketball game. And the Make em Meridian Hawks are your Class 1A boys basketball state champs. What a finish. Very, very well played uh, from an emotional standpoint. Well, there's some tears of sorrow and some tears of joy on this floor. Both teams played incredibly hard. You're talking about two 30 win teams meeting for the state championship. A combined record of 60 and 3 between these two clubs as they battled for the state trophy, and they put on a show. A lot of pride, a lot of pride for both schools. Players uh, represented the schools very well. It's just an outstanding game, a lot of emotion. Anytime you win a championship, it's, uh, it's a big deal. And Lee Hall is standing by with our post-game coverage. He's got head coach Jack Blickenserver. Lee, take it away. All right, guys, thanks a lot. Uh, coach, a lot of hugs, a lot of kisses, a lot of tears. 30 years, I guess you're you're due all that, right? Yeah, I think, you know, after you get to be my age, you get something like this, you can let your emotions go a little bit and be happy about for what the kids have done. And I'm so dang proud of them. I mean, they've just played so hard all season, and, and, and Fraser has been there. We've been ranked high all year long. And, and to go out and maintain that, it's just, uh, it, it, they're great. I can't say it now. They are fantastic kids. I love them all to death. I'd ever do anything for them any time in my life. And it's a moment you cherish, and it's uh the dream come true. They made it a little interesting again today for you, didn't they, down the stretch? They did, but I, you know, I thought we played a lot harder today. We kept our composure. We really did things we wanted to do. Uh, not unlike yesterday when uh, Anawan gave us a little fist. We, uh, I, I thought, we played really good defense today. Did you ever think when you took a 20-year break from head coaching, you come back and do something like this? Heck no! I was looking for retirement when I went to real estate and I got out of it. You know, and you know, it just worked out. To, it couldn't work out any better for me in my life. It's just, it's just been wonderful. Congratulations, to Joy. Thank you so much. All I'm right, sure. Dakota Getz is our country financial player of the game. 22 points, eight rebounds, high graphics. You know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about the performance today. You kind of took this team on your back, especially in the first half. I just wanted to come out and play uh, play as good as I can. I mean, for the occasion, you got to play as good as you can. Uh, do you think you might want to double up at Iowa, maybe play a little hoop? Uh, I don't think so, <laughs> no. I'm undersized. Can't do that. Tell me about uh, the, uh, the pressure you guys played under all year, getting here and being able to get it done and take home a state championship. Um, I, don't, I don't really think it was pressure. I mean, we were number one, you know, most of the season, I, I think we lost it towards the end. Uh, but I mean, there was really no pressure. We just, we knew what we had to do and uh, we did it. Good luck. Thank Congratulations. You. All right. All right. Dakota Getz, our country financial player of the game, helping lead Macon Meridian to their first ever state championship here today. 22 points and eight rebounds. Huge first half. His 18 points in the first half really set the tone for the for the rest of the, eight, the yes, day. It, yes, it did. But we also saw a great floor game by the two guards, uh, both Swigert and uh, Burns. And now we've got both teams on the floor to receive their medals and their trophies. So let's listen in to the ceremony here as both teams are going to be rewarded. Jim Boyd of Port Byron Riverdale, representing Division Four. Paul Whittington of East Peoria, representing Division Six; Arthur Rainey of Chicago Luther South, an at-large member, and Greg Bradley of Mount Zion, the board-appointed treasurer.
At this time, meet the Cardinals of Woodlawn, finishing in second place in 1A 2009 with a 30 and 2 record. Let's meet the superintendent of Woodlawn, Alan Estes. Principal, David Larkin. Athletic director and head coach, Shane Witzel. Assistant coach, Nathan Bolt. Manager, Peyton Schoenbeck. Scorekeeper, Wayne Brady. And now the Cardinals players. 10, Kirk Dunbar. 11, John Cavender. 14, Jeremy Aparicio. 15, Jesse Hart. 21, Jace Green. 22, Bronson Verhines. 24, Dawson Verhines. 25, Christian McNeil. 30, Luke Simmons. 31, Casey Hammond. 33, Jordan Wareheim. 35, Josh Wiggs. And 40, Kyle Bolt. The Cardinals of Woodlawn, second place, 1A, 2009, class 20 boards. And now let's meet the Hawks of Macon Meridian. First place, 2009, a record of 31 and two. Let's meet their superintendent, Dr. Frank Meyer. Athletic Director, Kevin Reedy. <laughs> Athletic Trainer, Becky Dillard. <laughs> the school's principal and its head coach, Jack Blickensdefer. <laughs> Assistant Coach, Mike Stodsdale. Assistant coach, Darren Shastine. <laughs> Assistant coach, Clint Cowman. <laughs> Assistant coach, Caleb Renfro. <laughs> Manager, Evan Collins. <laughs> Manager, Scott Swigert. Now the Hawks players, number 10, Corey Burns. 15, Dakota Getz. 20, Kyle Gates. 21, Jacob Shastine. 22, Bryson Barnes. 23, Logan Washburn. 25, Trent Swigert. 30, Caleb Brown. 32, Casey Dodson. 33, Mike Tag. 35, Tyler Albers. 42, Kyle Four. 
44, Josh Thompson. And 45, Brandon Kitchens. Congratulations, Bacon Meridian Hawks, 30 and 2, 1A Boys, 2009 champs. And now will Coach Witzel and the captains of Woodlawn step forward and receive the second place trophy. Congratulations, Woodlawn Cardinals. And now, Coach Blicken Defer and the captains of Meridian Hawks step forward to receive the first place trophy. Congratulations to the fans, the schools, the teams for being part of a successful 2009 1A state championship. And whoever you're driving next, please remember, buckle up and drive safely. Thank you for being here. Terrific state championship game. The Macon Meridian Hawks, a 63-53 win over the Woodlawn Cardinals. First ever state championship trophy headed back to Macon County. And we're back to continue our post-game coverage in a moment on the IHSA television network. We're back after these network messages. Sixty-three, fifty-three. Macon Meridian wins your Class 1A Boys Basketball State Championship for 2009 here at Carver Arena. Kurt Pedler along with former Normal U High head coach Cal Hubbard. Let's take a look at our championship game statistics brought to you by Menards. Save big money at Menards. You can see that uh, Macon Meridian was 22 of 31 from the free throw line as opposed to 16 free throws by Woodlawn, which says they had control of the game from about the middle of the third quarter on. Uh, they were forcing the fouls, uh, taking care of the basketball, and uh, were able to bring home the state championship trophy. Congratulations to them. Again, thanks to Menards for sponsoring our statistics throughout the course of this Class 1A boys basketball season and championship weekend. Save making money at Menards. All right, let's take a look at the highlights which shaped this championship game again, won by Meridian, 63-53. You can see that it's a, they were in attack mode for about two and a half quarters. And then once again, uh, Hammonds, I think, hits a three here. Correct. Yes. He, uh, he stepped up in the second half, had some good uh, offensive opportunities, especially after uh, Berhines, Dawson Berhines fouled out of the ball game. Uh, he, he, that's why they made their run, because of his defensive play. And that was kind of the nail in the coffin. Swigert with that layup there. He had 17 points again, 22 points for the All-Stater Dakota Getz. And Jacob Chastine chipped in 12 points for the winners, the Macon Meridian Hawks, who win at 63-53. Dawson Verhines had uh, 16 points to lead Woodlawn. Nonetheless, a great season for the Woodlawn Cardinals, who finish in second place. And a reminder that the 2A consolation game comes your way at 6.30. Marshall against Winnebago, followed by the 2A state championship game, Massac County against Seton Academy, 8.15 right here at Carver Arena. The executive producer of IHSA Television is Jim O'Boy. The director is Roger Steele. Thanks to our crew bringing us the pictures and the sounds of a great Class 1A boys basketball tournament. From our broadcast partners, Lee Hall and Cal Hubbard, this is Kurt Pegler, Macon Meridian, the state champion in Class 1A boys, 63-53. And good night from Carver Arena.